I'm on a quest to have a second healthy baby. And that means I'm not putting any toxins, any fragrances in my body. And that's where Caraway Home Cookware and their Tupperware come into play. Right now, when you use my code TSFS at CarawayHome.com, you get 10% off. I'm sure you're like, Sarah, what are you talking about? Well, Caraway products are non-toxic. That means they have no PFAs, PTFEs, those forever chemicals that are extremely hard to pronounce. And I just ordered their storage containers in Navy. Oh, and hello, they don't have any toxic chemicals either. Don't believe me? Go and read their five-star reviews. Over 65,000 people have rated them five stars. Visit CarawayHome.com slash TSFS to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive to Sarah Fraser Show listeners, so support my show and visit carawayhome.com slash TSFS or use code TSFS at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Hi there, this is legendary comedian and podcast pioneer Jimmy Pardo. I'm here to tell you about the award-winning podcast, Never Not Funny, We are now celebrating our 18th anniversary. That's right, 18 years of podcast greatness. Never Not Funny was one of the first comedy podcasts, and I'm told it's still one of the best. With guests like John Hamm, Caitlin Olson, Sarah Silverman, Maria Bamford, and Conan O'Brien, you get to listen in on some of the funniest people on the planet, tell stories, and make each other laugh. Subscribe to Never Not Funny now in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. returns to the podcast new allegations against louis ruelas and bo deedle the investigator Mm. are they investigating louis x and doing it illegally we get into that we also get into tamra judge she is releasing new text messages of why it fell apart between the trace amigas here's david well i can tell you who we are gonna check the that the that that's good oh you've got a lot to say well, she's in the court of getting a piece of Gouda. Um, hi, Tamara. I know you're listening. Gyrating on the bar. I mean, I hate to be that person, but could you imagine Heather Dubrow gyrating on a fucking bar? Coyote ugly style. I mean. I hope you're not going where I think. Are, are you going to make some ageist comments right now? No. Like she's too no. old to be uh, to be acting this way? I go to see my queen three times. Madonna. And they say this and that, and look at her. And she looks this, leave her alone. You wish you were up on a fucking stage with people bowing down. I am not ages. I am, uh, ageism bothers me more than almost any other thing. It does. The alternative, yeah, it really, it's, I'm really opposed to it. So many, I hate when someone says, oh my God, what happened to her? You got just as much older, sweetheart. Some people age gracefully. Some people put shots in their face like me. We're all going to get older and then we're going yeah, to drop but it's, dead. These people never know when to quit, though. That's what people can't stand. They're over Madonna. They're over Oprah. They're over mm-hmm. Katie Couric. They're over, because these people never quit. I'm trying to think of the men that haul themselves well, out uh, a fucking over and over Rolling again. Rolling Stones. What the hell? Mick Jagger. Oh, who's the other one there? James Corden. He'll go on and on. They Rod never Stewart. Know. Rod Stewart is still oh, touring, darling. Lord. I mean, they never know when to quit. That's well, what I don't can't understand. Stand. If you have energy at seventy-two, you're not going to still do this job. <laughs> no, I'm going to turn I'm the saying, cameras I'll off. I'll do it. I'll do it. I will do. <laughs> Let's do it with blank screens. Oh my god, that'd be great. Oh my God, that's our future. When you and I are 70, we're still going to be doing this, but the cameras will be off. You'll just see our names on yes. Zoom. That'll be it. Uh, no, I get I get your point. I think it's just, um, I think it's too, it's like they never know when to quit. And then they always act like, they always try to act 22. I'm saying I'll do it too. I know I will. I'll flaunt it. Like after I have my second kid, I want to pose nude at like 46. No one wants to see it. No one does. But I'm going to still do it. And that's these people. They go out there. Nobody. No one wants to see Madonna try to cowboy it like she did 25 years ago. But I do. <laughs> the only I do. You, yeah. <laughs> this, I don't know. I'm trying to think of someone that's aged. T- like Sandra Bullock. Like I think that's what people admire about her. She has a life outside of this. Like none of these other people do. They just keep. But no, I'm not going to say anything ageist. I'm just going to say, right. you know. Well, I will. I don't care. And I'll be Tamara's there Tamara's like, 
But okay, what the problem I have. She's, she, okay, she, uh, let's not take age. It's, it's, she just acts foolish is what you're saying. It's like, it's obnoxious. You have this number one podcast. You, you're on thirsty. a, you're right. Why are you so thirsty? Why are you so thirsty? The problem I have with her is now she's revealing the text that she sent with, this is still going on about why she pulled out of the Trace Amiga show. Now, let's hear your thoughts too. She sent, she reveals these texts between her and Shannon, where she says, she texts her following Shannon's DUI on October 10th, 2023. And she says, Shannon, I've thought long and hard about this. I have to be honest. Oh, I mean, honest, the rat that scurries. <laughs> Does anyone have a problem I mean, so far with what she's saying? She has to be honest about this. Okay. Now, listen, I get busy too. And I do text people sometimes things that should be a phone conversation. I mean, when you're breaking up a business thing, it probably should be a phone conversation. A hundred percent. Always, so, always. If you're making a move, yes, you need this to. This is a big move. These are your friends. So, I mean, yeah. I don't know why we're texting this, but she said, Here's where I start to have a because you read this and you're on Tamara's side. So let's start with that. She says the comments about you doing the show and me and Vicky supporting it are horrible. This is what she's writing in the text. So she's read the comments and everyone's like, Shannon's a drunk alcoholic. How could you two be enabling her? Who Basically, be that's rehab. what she said. Okay. But she's saying the comments about you doing the show and me and Vicky supporting it are horrible. It's not a good look for any of us, especially you, Shannon. Bravo has told me it's not a good idea and we should postpone. The text went on. It's just too soon. I'm now getting messages, comments that I'm an alcoholic for continuing and supporting you with the show next month. I'm sorry. I just can't move forward with the show. Yeah, that's basically what it said. So. All right. But you, what do you find bad? I mean, I kind of agree with that. Now, the only part I, I disagree with is what the audience says and then what they do is usually very different. So I don't know why she's giving that so much merit. However, I do. I The optics are bad. And look, I've said this a million times on our show. Gina Kirschenheider came on my podcast just a couple months ago and said that the rumors are she has not seen Shannon because she and Shannon are not friends in real life. But she, she said the rumor from the jump right after she was arrested a few weeks later, she's been drinking, that she was drinking at BravoCon allegedly. I do not have proof. She's never stopped drinking. So I get, I mean, to me, I actually, the rat, I kind of was agreeing with her. I think the optics, and it will be interesting to see if that show, I'm sure it's going to do probably pretty well because people love, and that was the thing at BravoCon, people love Shannon. They No one missed a beat. And even even a, a viewer stood up and said, or a fan stood up and said to Andy, don't you find it odd that like Tom Sandoval is booed and cussed out here? And then Shannon, who, I mean, could have killed herself. She's a mother. Could have killed someone. Could have killed a child. Is like revered, cheered, huge lines for an autograph. And I know one thing doesn't, you know, everybody makes mistakes. Everyone makes mistakes. But the opt, I, I have to say I agree with the rat on this one. I, too, agree with everything that the rat wrote. I mean, I agree that the comments are horrible and it's not a good look and it, you know, Shannon probably has a drinking problem, but it's too soon. I agree with what the rat wrote as well. The problem is... All right, tell me. The problem is, first of all, the rat lies. So let's just put that out there. That's a problem. The Tam rat lies. Right. And second of all, since when does Tam rat care about what anyone thinks? So I agree with you and, and that everything she wrote is so... True. I think it is too soon. It's certainly not a good look for any of them when there's alcohol involved. And I think Shannon needs help. And I think it is enabling. Having said that, I think as human beings, we do what we want to do. You know, oh my God, this guy is this, this, that. Well, I don't know why you're on a 12th date with him. You obviously want to be treated like shit because you feel you deserve to be treated like shit. We don't do things in life that we don't want to do. So if Tam or Judge, Barney, the rat, Tamrat that scurries for her cheese in the corner wanted to go on the Trace Amigas tour. She would not give one fuck on her left breast implant what the people in the world are saying. She would be there. She would collect the money. She would put it in her pocket and she would go. She obviously is busy filming Housewives, gyrating on the bar. 
She's with her best friend, apparently, Teddy Mellencamp. They did do the one-off show. She has all these other little podcasts under her. You're just busy. And I had I more power to you, girl. Get your bag. You just don't want to do this. You just all of a sudden feel you're better than Vicky because she's not on the show. You don't want to associate. And you're all you're doing well with Teddy. And you're like in the big time, apparently. So just be honest. It's not that you, these comments got to Tamara Judge, really. All of a sudden, the woman who screams as loud as she can that it's not her opinion, that is gyrating, all of a sudden she cares what the comments say. And this is not a good look. And she and Bravo told her to that just to postpone this. I mean, it's always look. it's always the way you frame it. If she had come out and said, look, my friend made a mistake, we're gonna go on tour. I, I, like I you know, if I, if I were Shannon, I would I would not be caught dead drinking anywhere in front of anyone for like five or six months, okay? And then you can ease back in because everybody out here is California sober, which isn't sober at all, but they pretend Sober curious, darling. Or they're sober curious, right. I, look, if, Tom, if, if, Tom if, Schwartz has taught us a new word, darling. Don't you love discovering new games for your phone that are a bit of a mind teaser, a little bit of a mystery, and aren't filled with annoying ads? Boom, I got it for you. Seekers Notes. Guys, Seekers Notes is in a game already played by 40 million fans. And the best part about this game, there it isn't one of those games just for killing time. It's a perfect stress reliever, too. The game is great with community and social interactions. Every puzzle is a workout for your brain, baby. Also, the best part, like I mentioned, totally a no annoying ads. It's no Wi-Fi needed. And it's free. Now, it has a variety of virtual collectibles as well. Beyond the captivating visuals and immersive atmosphere, Seeker's Note offers a treasure trove of virtual collectibles. These are not mere items. They are relics and add depth and meaning to your journey. What are you waiting for? Get playing today. Get a little stress reliever. Oh, nothing is better than a fun game on your phone. Download Seeker's Notes now. This is a first for the Sarah Fraser Show. I have partnered with a mindful eating doctor. You guys know I gained and lost 150 pounds until I found mindfulness and quit all fad dietings. If you have tried every diet under the sun, I want to introduce you to Dr. Applin at Optimal Body. Go to myoptimalbody.com, request an appointment, and be sure to say that the Sarah Fraser Show sent you because you can qualify for a free personalized assessment plus a bonus free 30-day supply of their gut repair product when you sign up for a customized plan. Again, that's myoptimalbody.com to request an appointment. I have never partnered with a fad weight loss company, and I never will. Dr. Applin is the real deal. If you have even tried Ozempic and it didn't work for you, you need to see him. Starts with a gut reset and they actually make a plan for you that is long-term and slow weight loss so you can keep it off and change your life forever. Don't believe me? Go and read their mindful five-star reviews. Go to myoptimalbody.com and tell them the Sarah Fraser Show sent you. If Tamara had just gone, we're going on tour, she made a mistake, she should have, and, and if I were Shannon, I'd come out every tour. The very first thing I'd say is I'm so blessed. I'm blessed that you guys are all here. I made a mistake earlier this year. I'm working on myself and it won't happen again. And by the grace of God, no one was hurt. Then I'd carry on with the show and then boom, you know, everyone would be like, stand up, stand up woman, stand up, stand up woman about Tamara. Tamara, I, that is the part I agree with you that seems lying. Is she just, whether she's busy making too much money on two T's, she doesn't want to go on tour with them. That's what it just comes down to because she probably feels like they're not that big enough anymore Vicky's not coming back to RHOC so it's not going to hold the same punch what it's even though she's filming she filmed a scene with uh Shannon this week or last week wait Vicky did uh, like a, a oh. scene yeah okay, I don't but- know if this means she's back in a friend role I just think I mean I Jeff Lewis was supposed to film a scene and then it didn't work out and I just think Shannon needs someone to sit there and film this like minute of a scene you know it's always the way you frame it. And the bottom line is that Tamara, for probably money reasons, just doesn't want to go on tour with them. And maybe it's optics too. So just say, like, that's yeah. my problem. Just say, like, hey, Shannon, you. listen, uh, can we talk? I am so fucking busy. I have to be honest with you. I am literally on the verge of a nervous. And I understand this. Like, I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I wake up and I am busy from the minute I get up to the minute I go to bed with work. I have to film. I mean, filming is no joke. I have two T's. It's just like, I just don't have the time. I'm sorry. Now that's where I am on 
Tamara's side of like, to me, business and personal are separate. So like, if I can't do something business-wise, I'm like, I just physically can't do this, or it's just not right for me business-wise. I'm sorry, you're a group. I don't like all these lies, but everything she wrote, I agree with. And just Vicky's hurt. Vicky is just hurt. She feels like her friend abandoned her. And the OG, the OC, who is a very nice woman, she is a, at the core, she's a nice woman, Vicky Gommel said. She's just as hurt by her friend. She's hurt. I would be Justice too. If you were if you were Justice doing this to me, I'd be very hurt. I'd have a lot oh, to God. say. Oh my God! Oh God! A lot to say. Well, you wanted to go into business with me, and I said, "Let's just do this." You have your show. I have much. I have saved you from you, the disaster that is David Yonta. You did save me. I appreciate that. Wait, <laughs> I want to do rapid fire You're with welcome. you because I want to know all your thoughts sure. on these. What do you make of Larsa Pippen and Michael Jordan's son? Supposedly broken up, and then on Valentine's Day together, yeah. huge rock. What do you um what do you make of all this? Truly, I don't Marcus. think it's for publicity. I think that they are truly in love. I think it has more to do with the fact that he is younger, he wants children. I don't really think it has to do with like the the families. I think that he wants kids and she doesn't and I think they're truly in love. And I think that, you know, when you have different life goals, she has four kids with Scotty, you're not on the same page, you break up, but I think they're really in love. And after 48 hours alone, you're like, well, I can't solve the future. Just, this doesn't feel good. I love you. And then they get back together on Valentine's Day and bitch got a huge fucking ring. Um, Oh, she got a huge ring. I think they're really in love. I actually think it's authentic. There you go. What else you want to rapid oh, fire? That's a good one. Okay. Um, I want to know um, our friend Bo Deedle, your friend Bo Deedle. I mean, the legendary uh, in private investigator, darling, now being sued with Louis Ruelas. Um, and for Louis's ex, was it wife or girlfriend or fiance, I believe, fiance, that Vanessa they were Ryan, like sir. digging and deep in and they were in things that you they should what? not have been in hacking. What do we believe here? I'm very lost. You're not going to like the answer. Okay, what? Everybody, cute. I'm going to get all the hate. I love the hate. Um, I only discuss RHONJ on Patreon, period, the end. We said it. And I did a whole show on Patreon about this this past Saturday. I gave you all my thoughts. And uh, I'm a little upset that you did not listen to the Patreon episode, Sarah. <laughs> I'm sorry. But um, I'm sorry. I, I when the season of RHO and J starts, the reviews, the recaps, my thoughts on Teresa, all that I have, to, I will put RHO and J guests because I got six of them. I think I counted coming on the main show here. Um, six? past and present. Oh, I, my I counted. God. Yeah, that's enormous. but my wow. thoughts on RHO and J will only be on Patreon. And anyone that wants to join Patreon to listen can, and if not. It is a free world, and that is the beautiful thing about the world. Okay. So go um, to Patreon to hear my thoughts. I'm Bo Deedle and Louis Aurelius in this lesson. I have a lot of them. All right. Go on. I have one more. Bethany Frankel apparently getting phone calls about James Kennedy. Reality Reckoning, and Bethany says she has been – she had been tipped off – and uh, the network is ignoring this. There was even discussion of it at the um, VPR reunion. It was edited out. It is not in the best interest of the network to show or discuss James Kennedy's alleged abuse towards women. Thoughts? Do you think Bethany is going to save the day? Is Bethany on this case? Well, she certainly says she is. She also is alleging that she um, has, uh, there's more to the interview with Miss uh, Rachel Levis, that this came up and she like toned it down and edited it out. Um, I have a few issues here. Uh, I see what she's saying. Like she says, charming, handsome guy with a British accent on the show. Listen, I think two things. First of all, Bethany, as my good friend, uh, Portia Williams taught me, where are the fucking receipts, girl? I would like to see the receipts of where you got a call that you should look into this, that James allegedly is a little, you know, angry with his fists. I, I would like to, really, Bethany, show me the fucking receipts. All Is of a sudden, everyone's going to Bethany. Big accusations. And she big says- Big accusations. She says, yeah. oh, it's okay. Not Okay, she doesn't frame it like this, so I'm incorrect here. But she basically said, well- you know, um, you got to throw these things out there because some of the men have been proved innocent and they've gone on and been just fine. And others, it was true. 
which I think is so BS because once you plant that seed, I think a lot of men, uh, you know, I, do I think a lot of men are guilty? A hundred percent. But do I think they all are? No. I mean, get that's insane. Every woman should be heard. Not everyone should be believed. It goes for men and women. So, I mean, to throw these out is quite damning. I hope she really has proof because once you float it, it's very hard for men, I think, to, and women, anybody that's made an, a very strong accusation. And here's the thing. In the day of the reality reckoning and in, in Raquel leaving yeah. and going to, you know, treatment and, and everything else that is going on, you know, the bachelor just went, you know, they go through hell with like, they just were asked about diversity and inclusion. They were on a panel. They all just sat there like, duh, we don't even know what to say. Uh, literally, they didn't say anything. It was silence for like eight minutes. Wait, who? They NBC at- execs or who? No, Bachelor execs, they were asked, they were on a panel, there were three of them, and they were asked, like, you know, about diversity and inclusion. And literally, it's like, if you and me, and say, I don't know, Rachel, you could tell we're on a panel, and I was sitting there, like, saying to myself, Sarah or Rachel could speak up, because I'm not answering this, and you were saying, David could speak up. Oh, I, the I'd three see, of them sat there, it was silent, they all punted. But I think, bravo, in this day and age, in this day and age, if it was, if there were cameraman and people pouring the coffee and a janitor in the corner mopping the floor, and this was like an open set or a close, whatever it is, things get out. So I think if this were filmed at the Vanderpump reunion that just took place with Scandal, that Jane allegedly was doing all these things you mean to tell me bravo would just say oh we we can't fire james because we have a hit show i highly doubt that i don't think he brings that much yeah i know i mean you're gonna risk that in in 2024 i really doubt that bethany i really do so i'm sorry i doubt that this was talked about at the reunion and just let's protect our star of the show james first of all ain't no star of no show i think even if it was fucking tadacia or kyle and it was like kyle beats mauricio and mauricio is black and blues all over him i even think she would be in in jet i think no i think a network would take this very seriously if it were discussed at a reunion it would not be edited out and swept under the carpet when Katie Maloney is sitting in the corner and Schwartz is like, duh. I mean, you know, and Lala's like, oh, that ain't right. I just think wow. it would all be brought to light. So Bethany, I'm sorry. I doubt this. I can't, I mean, I gotta go. So, but I, I, I'm curious where you think reality reckoning is at. I think can you call your friend Mark? Or... Well, can you call your friend Mark Garagos? I mean, he loved you that you were an attorney. Call, call, can you just slide into Mark's DMs? Hey, Mark, any updates? Sure, but I really think we're over it. I mean, I think Bethany has just... No, we better not be. That was a huge thing. I wish Miss Frankel... Look, I mean, she's doing just fine. I mean, she has more money than all of us. But where's her... Her podcast is not like... It's, I just think Bethany just start something and then... As it's very hard, as you know, to be several years in and still be a podcast that is producing. It's really hard. I just think Bethany's over it. I think she's like, where's her podcast? It's still there. I know it's still there, but she had that big moment with Raquel and that big moment with Nene. Yeah, girl, you could have a lot of big moments. You're Bethany Frankel. You got to keep working every day, girl. They ain't going to come to you and knock on your door, honey. This isn't housewife. Show up and film and then go to bed. I mean... Where's her podcast there? I'm being really serious. Like her podcast is like, who's it's not trending as much. I don't know. I don't know. Am I, am, am I being a troll or am I just asking some questions? Um. Well, I love your hot takes always. I so uh, you're, I'm the wrong person to ask. Um. I don't know. You know, I mean, look, these big mm-hmm. changes, right? SAG after wasn't built in a day. So maybe she's, maybe she's working on a lot more behind the scenes. I would, you know, I, I've said this Bravo people aren't the only people. There's a lot of TLC people and VH1 people. And I mean, it's 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 so hard because these people now that are on reality TV make so much money on other projects. Like my girl, Tammy Slayton from Thousand Pound Sisters, who I love. She just signed a modeling contract, mm. like legit. And, you know, they make a fortune on Cameo, Big Ed. I mean, it's it's like, yes, I do believe they should be given health care coverage for their time that they're on there. That seems insane to me. I don't know. And I just think that people are going to do anything. If if you right now get a phone call from ABC, NBC, we, David, we want you. 
Um, we're only going to pay you $5,000 an episode, but we want you. I mean, everyone would sign their life away. They would just I would sign, sign their yeah. life away. They really would. And anyone that's- I'm trying- not signing, you know, but I have to say, I wouldn't sign away this podcast. Like, you're not getting a percentage of this podcast, which I built. I'll sign Mine's anything for sale. else away. I'm your second child. I'll give you a cut. Well, what are you going to do? How are we going to grow it together? That's the, yeah, I'm ready. NBC, call me. So what happens if you're on a show for like nine months and it's like girlfriends in Paris Mm -hmm. canceled and then the podcast blows off because you have on Taylor Swift and your podcast and and the contract says, I think, you know, we get it like a year later. You're, I'm not signing it. I, I need an I exclusion for what I built. Because it's I'm sorry. all about what you do with it. You, it's all you about can what have you anything that. else except behind the belt. Maybe you can have 5% for like two years. Call me NBC. 50-50 split. Uh, I am willing to give you a 50. Co- and, and that is f- in perpetuity. She's for sale. And She's for sale. Absolutely. You promote me. You put me on. You got me Taylor Swift. Uh, and, and then even when you cancel me. We are still going to be making money together into our okay. 70s. And you are aligned with me. And I can always use that NBC name. And you can use the Sarah Fraser name. But, you know, we're not going to be canceled. The Sarah Fraser talk show is going to go on to be a huge talk show. David Leontief will be on always. NBC yes. owns 50%. And darling, every year they're making $30 million, I'm making twenty. And is that a bad life? No. No, no. I mean, I'll, I'll rising take that tides, deal. rising tides lift all ships. I am for sale. Tubi, Tubi, Tubi. Where are you at? I don't even know where to find you on the app. Tubi, I'm I for just, sale, baby. I've built it, and you are welcome to it. We'll be in a I deal just, together. I wanted a podcast purchase. I think I would sell this for like five million. Of course you would. I mean, you've built it. You've done a great job, and you you need to strike. But you have the iron to keep. You got to keep me on. You got to keep me on with a salary of two fifty a year. Let them fire you, years. replace you with someone, and still pay you. That would be the. I would yeah. love for NBC to buy the Sarah Fraser show. Oh, can God. me bring in a new Sarah Fraser, and I'm forever getting a check every month. You think I care? Do you think the people on Seinfeld, they're getting so much money years later. You think any of them care? No. Chris Chris Harrison? Chris I mean, Harrison. the man is canceled for $25 million, dear. I know. It's like, you know, I mean. Stassi. Only... Stassi is apparently outgrowing her current house and is buying another one. <laughs> oh, so apparently, Stassi's canceled? house shopping. So I don't understand where those finances come from. I don't I don't get it anymore. Because canceling like, doesn't exist. It's a great platform if you know what to do with it. You have to continue. You have to continue because everyone that's canceled, there's a huge population of people who hate cancel culture. It's it they will rally for you. And if you have true talent, I I actually believe Stasi has true talent in showing her life and showing her kids and her husband. Her husband's good on the podcast, the people she brings in. She obviously was great television. I mean, you you and I have real talent we wouldn't be here years later on this podcast and and that's why but i I think people anyway whatever we're not doing a business podcast no one gives a shit all right i gotta let you go they want to hear our bravo takes and here we are giving two people well the bravo is anyone still there (laughs) is anyone still we mentioned (laughs) stassi's name someone's still listening we said stassi 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 she's wearing a bravo shirt i'm gonna start saying stassi 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 yes let's do a stassi 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 all right i love you uh we'll see you soon Bye. bye